So what are all the rules with these required uniforms at ATP and why do they make us wear them? Let's get into all that and more in this video. What's up you guys and welcome back to Taking Flight. If you're new here, my name is Ethan Gregerson. I'm a certified flight instructor and commercial pilot. And in this video, as you might've seen in the title, we're gonna talk about these ATP uniforms, why they make us wear them, and some of the rules associated with these uniforms. So without further ado, let's get into everything about these ATP uniforms. So first of all, before we get into anything else, let's talk about what ATP actually gives you first. And if you wanna see everything that ATP gives you, you can check out my video up here in one of these two corners. But uh, they give you this uniform. They give you five polo shirts that look exactly like this. This is part of their uniform. And they give you this ATP hat. They don't give you anything else. But they also require a few other things that we'll get into later. But this hat and these shirts are the two things that they give you that are part of the uniform that are required. So now let's talk about the dress code and the uniform itself. And we can find that in the student and instructor handbook that ATP is going to give you on your first day. So first things first, in the student and instructor handbook, we have a heading called appearance and hygiene. This kind of outlines everything that ATP requires for their standards of appearance and hygiene. And the first thing they talk about is of course the uniform. So let's kind of go through and read this. Blue ATP polo shirt, which is provided by ATP. You need to wear it tucked in. You can wear khaki, navy, gray, or black chino style shorts or pants with a belt. You also need to wear some closed toed shoes or sneakers. That's pretty self-explanatory with flying a plane. You can't fly a plane in sandals or anything like that. So you need to wear a secure shoe. And then of course, failure to comply with any of these standards of appearance and hygiene may result in canceled training events. Now per the handbook, it says that all clothing need to be free of wrinkles and clean, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And then the last thing, hair must be done nicely or you can wear this cool ATP hat that they give you in the box. And once again, if you wanna see that video, you can click up here. So that's kind of the basics behind the dress code. Now let's talk about some regulations they have with the appearance and hygiene that they require for their students. Now per the handbook, it says that everybody must maintain good hygiene. And per the handbook, it says that pilots share small spaces in the training environment, like a cockpit or a simulator, and must be aware of body odor, oral hygiene, and heavily scented perfumes or colognes, which may negatively affect others. So essentially, be aware of how you smell and take care of your body. Simple as that. Now let's talk about the hair and facial hair standards that they require. The first thing in the handbook says that hair must have an overall professional look appropriate for business interactions. For females, the hair must be clean and well-groomed. Long hair that falls below the shoulders must be pulled up. And for males, the hair must not extend over the top of the ear or be longer than the top of the shirt collar. Extreme hair colors are not permitted. As for facial hair, there are actually some regulations with this. Males must be clean shaven, but they are allowed to have a small well-trimmed mustache that doesn't extend over the corners of their mouths, so keep that in mind. Next, there's a little paragraph here about jewelry. Jewelry must complement the pilot uniform and represent a conservative business appearance. One matched pair of conservative earrings may be worn in each earlobe. Plug style earrings are not permitted. Facial jewelry is also not permitted. And most importantly, jewelry must not interfere with pilot duties. The last paragraph in this section of the student and instructor handbook talks about tattoos. As you may know, some airlines do require tattoos to be covered by the uniform. And ATP just kind of reminds you of this right here in this paragraph. It says airlines require pilots to keep tattoos covered by the uniform. ATP encourages potential airline candidates to consider the impact of that policy on their future employment. I have seen quite a few students training at ATP with tattoos and that's fine but just keep in mind for the airlines they may want the tattoos to be covered by the uniform but keep in mind policies are going to change airline to airline so it's a personal decision okay so i know i covered a lot in this video but before you go i want to tell you about an awesome company called flight sim coach who just so happens to be sponsoring this portion of the video if you're a flight student or a sim enthusiast which i know a lot of you guys are you're definitely going to want to check these guys out flight sim coach is your at-home solution to becoming a better student and a better sim pilot if you don't have access to an airplane or if you're preparing for a check ride and you're having a hard time bugging your instructor to give you ground training to get ready. They do offer that valuable one-on-one -on -one ground training, but on top of that, they also offer the ability to have an experienced instructor provide instruction to you via one of the newest flight simulator softwares like Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane. As a flight instructor myself, I think that one-on-one -on -one ground training with an instructor and a student is the best way to get ready for a check ride or to become a better flight student. So check out the link below and schedule your free consult with them today. But with that said, thanks again for watching. Stay safe, stay proficient, and we'll see you in the next video.